So according to the request for, from the yeah, from the organizers, I will make this in English, but I hope nobody would complain. Yeah. So uh, what I should say first of all, I work at the University of ISO, uh, where I research game AI based on uh, data like a data-driven game AI. And uh, sometimes at the universities, you know, we feel a bit detached from real world, so um, yeah, we want to do something practical. So I was very excited when I got a request from my friend. He said, well, you do game AI, why won't you make a game, an AI for our upcoming mobile game project? So uh, there is a startup company called uh, Helium 9 Games, and uh, just rewind, three years later, we get a game. So, and it was released, uh, I think, in late May, uh, let me show you just a quick uh, clip, so how it works, yeah, something like that. And uh, I can speak in great length about the AI uh, used there because it's based on machine learning, it's uh, super duper interesting and we have publications about that, but that's not the topic of today. Now let's come back to the present moment. So after I, uh, yes, and you can see that uh, we get quite good results uh, with this game, so we're struggling to the top. I think it's already one of the best uh, mobile tennis games on the market. And after uh, we finish the AI, uh, the project managers say, okay, um, we're happy with your AI, so yeah, yeah, I know you need this refactoring, technical debt, just uh, wrap up whatever you are doing and give us a hand. Say, so, okay, what? And he says, well, we get a very exciting topic for you, quality assurance. I said, well, uh, are you sure? He said, well, you know, it's a startup. You got to do what you got to do. I said, okay. And if you got to do what you got to do, you better like it. I said, okay. So that's why I had to plunge into this topic of quality assurance in games. And I can tell you that that's a really interesting thing because games are very curious beasts. So they are not... Uh, similar to office applications or many other types of applications. And there are some factors that severely affect the way you do QA in a game project. So these are just some of the few factors which uh, we encountered. So first of all, you really very heavily rely on, uh, not just on the third party libraries, but the other libraries that are really just released. They're a very immature phase. So for example, we had a situation we are working with Unity. So when they just released cloth simulation. So you know, it's a tennis game, we have some female characters, nice skirts, but the only trouble is, yeah, they look like uh, cloths, they like uh, follow the wind. But the thing is, uh, sometimes it crashed. And now you face a choice. You either have skirts made of plastic, or you have to just manage with the crashes, live with them. Same uh, with other libraries like, uh, say, um, advertisement. If you want to have ads, you have to work with SDK supplied by your ad provider, period. Otherwise, you just don't use ads. And then, uh, surely, if it's a mobile game, you have a, a variety of platforms and a variety of uh, uh, devices it has to work with. So, again, same situation. Uh, you have to think what you're going to do if uh, there is a crash. So, in um, uh, practice, what does it mean? It means that you have to uh, treat bugs and crashes pragmatically. They are inevitable. So it's not the way that you say, well, there is a crash, you have to fight it. No, you can't fight it. It will be there. And you only have to make a business decision what you're gonna do with that. You either cut this functionality or you make an informed business decision that yes, I will live with that because it's still better, because it brings business value, regardless of the crashes. And then surely there is a huge number of visual issues which only can be revealed with manual testing. Because, well, sometimes we had the situation when our characters were like one feet deep in the grass because some designer just put their own coordinates. And then uh, there is this, uh, again, uh, if you read some literature on testing, especially on unit testing, you will see that not all code benefits equally from unit testing because sometimes uh, it ju it's really heavy algorithmic stuff which uh, you really easy to write unit test and there is huge output, huge uh, profit in that. But sometimes it's just uh, the thing that coordinates uh, some objects and you will end up writing more mock-ups than actual unit tests. And in game design it's a very typical situation because the heavy lifting is in the game engine and game engine is Unity, so you don't have to debug it. What you have to debug is you have to debug your code that mostly operates your internal game logic. So the test tends to be very complicated. 
And of course, there is a huge integration of uh, GUI inside the game engine. Heard about MVC? Forget it. Because, for example, if we have game physics and game anima animations, logically, they're different. In Unity, it's the same. So if you want to uh, say, for example, find out what will happen if my character walks three steps, how do you find out that? You have to play the animation sequence. You cannot avoid that. So it means that uh, you cannot have, uh, let's, let's say, headless testing. So you have to visually show this whole animation stuff. So uh, for the rest of my talk, I will just focus on the things which you probably know, because we don't really use any uh, practices that are not yet established, but what's really good, what shines, is when you use them in combination, so then you really get the cumulative uh, synergetic or synergistic effect. So first uh, thing which I now recommend everyone is a free tool called Crashlytics. It's a little piece of code, free, once again. Uh, you can embody in your code, and every time you get a crash, it reports it. So you can then later uh, see in a dashboard uh, the details of that. Why we use that? Not only to discover crashes, because we know our crashes, but to find out the exact configurations. And then we have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes we see, okay, it crashes very often on a certain phone. And then we simply can remove that phone from the list of supported equipment if it's not a very popular device. Sometimes you can just uh, remove, as I said, cloth simulation. Okay, let the skirts be plastic, but only on that particular phone. Then, uh, or same thing happens with RAM, let's say, not enough RAM. Then uh, we use a lot of automated bugs, a bug reporting system. So uh, think about assertions, but these assertions do not um, just terminate your application. Instead, uh, they report uh, in a similar way as Crashlytics to your server. What's the um, nice thing, things in the game? A huge number of bugs, they are non-fatal. For example, we have a ball which flies too high, so it's higher than we expected. Or some character moves too fast, faster than we expected. The customer, the player, maybe will not even notice that. So it's not fatal, we can just continue. But what we do is we report it, and later we analyze that. So uh, what next? Uh, of course, our testers, they do have special interface so they can uh, also report the bugs manually. That's, that's huge importance. So every time we have something, we can check something, we check something and we report it to our dashboard. Then obviously, I shouldn't mention that, it's clear that we have a lot of manual testing. We have people who daily run the game, check if everything is all right, check the visual glitches, and they have a, a special checklist. They also um, record video streams and put it on YouTube and say something like, okay, watch this clip, watch, go to uh, some uh, chunk at one minute, 50 seconds, look what's there, it's wrong. But uh, what's especially important, and just to wrap it up, that's the specialized system which uh, we created uh, specifically for that project, it's a mobile testing farm. So we have a couple of computers that uh, live under my desk, and several mobile devices attached to it through USB. And there is a free software called Appium that can basically automate mobile applications. I recommend it. And what we do is I wrote some scripts that automatically fetch uh, every build from the build system and go through the checklist by simulating user behavior. So what these uh, automated checkups can do? Basically, they can do a lot. They can pass the game tutorial, they can customize the player, they can buy equipment, they can switch uh, between clubs. So you see that this testing, it checks the sanity of many independent systems. Because, for example, if uh, internet connection doesn't work, it will not work too. So if uh, the game crashes, it crashes too. And what's the best thing about it, why I like it especially? Because it works in synergy with the previous steps, because these scripts, they simulate users. So it means that we also get crashes and we get automated bug reports also from these scripts. So even before shipping the game, just by passing this automated test, we can already discover a lot of crashes. And in addition, uh, what I can say about that is uh, our testers are not now, you know, okay, they sometimes tempted to take the easy way. Like you run the game, you see something obvious glitch, say okay, yeah, I found the glitch, my job for today is done. 
<laughs> now they can't do that because uh, all the basic things are already uncovered by the test, so they have to work hard. Then second thing is they report a lot of technical data, like frame rate, because sometimes, okay, we get the frame rate drop. For people, it's difficult to see, especially if they have top iPhone, but I specifically bought the weakest devices for the farm on eBay because I wanted to make sure that it works on uh, weak devices. And then uh, also they can work forever. They can work like three hours, four hours, no trouble. So it's like stress testing. And uh, that's also especially good so we don't have to ask our uh, friends, our testers to do that. So uh, wrapping up, I can just uh, summarize and uh, repeat that uh, testing, it's a proper testing in games is tough. But also, it's very important because in this business, your reviews is everything. You get stars on Google Play, you go up. You, you get downvoted, you go down. You go down, you're doomed. Crashes are number one reasons why people give bad reviews on Google Play and App Store. That's fact. So that's why, yeah, people are not tolerant. Just, I played 10 hours and it crashed. Well, so that's why it must be very polished before you release it. And uh, on the other hand, you must be pragmatic. You must understand that not everything is beyond your control. Currently, the number one reason for crashes is third-party ads. So the clips crash, and we have nothing to do with that. So we just can remove ads from the game. That's one option. That's, we do some this for some particular devices. So people don't watch ads on some devices. Well, don't, uh, yeah, don't envy them because they get uh, coins for watching ads. So actually, they're disadvantaged. So, and uh, of course, the smoke testing with the mobile farm, I think, is, was extremely helpful. So now, my every day, what I do, I open this interface and I check, okay, what's new? And then I tell our programmers, I see, huh, you crashed the mobile farm. So that's bad. So, uh, but you. Even if you implement some of these elements, it's already better than nothing and better than many people do. But if you implement all of them, you really get this cumulative effect, uh, effect of synergy. Because, yeah, these systems work together and reinforce the quality of your application. So, happy coding. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maxim. And uh, we have time for some questions. So, oh, we have to use the Squid Group. So, please. Oh, sorry. I, I, will, I will try, sorry. You can start using my microphone. And um, thank you for your interesting speech. My name is Smith. I'm a mobile developer. Uh, so uh, it was a very interesting system, like you're running some scripts, and uh, it automatically checks some bugs and uh, stuff. So uh, my question is about, uh, do you use some CI, continuous integration tools, for checking the, uh, and uh, how you manage to uh, automatically start uh, your application with uh, your um, automatic script? Uh, I'm not sure how it even possible on, for, for example, iOS. No, no, it, it is possible because, uh, okay, let's, let's separate it. So currently we use TeamCity on JetBrains. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one thing is uh, about Team City. First, you have you can automate testing right after the build is ready. But in this case, it's not a good idea because the tests are very uh, it, they take a lot of time, like two hours. So what we do uh, uh, instead is we use REST interface because in the Team City you can simply uh, pull you can just pull a list of the recent builds. So this uh, system simply pulls it like every ten seconds and sees if there is a recent build. And if there is a recent build, it gets the build artifacts. And then it, uh, through Appium, it installs it on iOS, for example. You can do that with Appium. It's Appium's work. And runs it. So uh, the key point here is the tests are separated from Team City, and that's why they don't become a bottleneck. So we can get 10 builds, and just this uh, build go to the uh, testing queue. And of course, this testing works much longer. It takes a lot of time yeah, before it finishes. How do you manage to run it on iOS? It's Appium's work. You can do it with Appium. Yeah, you can. So it's but it's real IOS. It's not a simulator. So there is the Appium. You give it the uh, uh, IPA file. Yeah, yeah. You, you just give it IPA file. It copies it to the uh, actual iPhone device. Do you have to uh, jailbreak the uh, No. It's uh, the thing is, uh, of course, it's not the it's IPA signed with your developer certificate. Yes, and you install it on your iPhone. That's it. 
So I, I, can't, I can't make it on my iPhone, but I can make it on your iPhone, yes, because it's limited to my death certificate. Yeah, I can tell you in more detail later. So more questions, please. I can use this, this device. Throw it. Uh, yes, yes that's, I, I have to be sure that someone will <laughs> catch it. So. so everything is clear. So everything is clear. So thank you very much for being with us and now we have a time for a break.